First tip to improve your 2K time trial, uh, know your current capacity and make sure you've got an idea of what your maximal aerobic speed is. Uh, and that's really, really important. There's no point following a program uh, if you're just following targets or following the running partner all the time uh, and your running partners are changing or you're following a different workout every time. Some days you're just going hard off field, other days you're going easy because you're feeling uh, not that motivated. We want to take the emotions out of it and have a really clear program um, that is structured, progressively overloaded, but more importantly, is specific to your capacity. So to work out your uh, maximum aerobic speed, the research shows a minimum of a six minute max distance run. It would be the least amount of time to be able to get an idea of what that maximum aerobic speed is to have an idea of how we can improve your VO2 max. So six minutes would be the minimum. Uh, you can do anywhere between six and 10 minutes to get that same effect. Number two, particularly for those that have got a, already a, a quite a fast 2K time trial. So if you listen to this and your 2K time trials between six minutes and seven minutes, repeat speed day is really, really important in your program because you're already moving at a pretty quick pace uh, to get that time. So we want to be working uh, at above your um, max maximal aerobic speed um, by at least 20%. So you're working at 120% if you're using MAS. I like to work out your anaerobic speed reserve for more repeat speed days, particularly because uh, you may have a really good, uh, a really average 2K time trial, but you're super fast. So for those guys, it's really important that we've got an understanding of what their max speed is. Otherwise, the repeat speed data we program, if we just go off their 2K time trial, will be far too easy and we're not going to get the stimulus to really challenge repeat speed day. So um, you can work out what's called their anaerobic speed reserve. If you Google that, um, you'll, uh, my blog post will pop up. Tip number three, something that probably gets overlooked a lot, and that's the importance of flexibility and mobility to be able to get in really efficient shapes, okay? So we've, I've talked about the importance of a running technique in the past. Um, something that I think gets overlooked is flexibility, so making sure that you are getting some stretching in and also tissue health. So if you're following an intense program, we want to make sure that you're, you're um, looking after your ITB, your calves, uh, your feet, uh, quads, adductors, these muscles that are um, being uh, constantly pushed to adapt need to also make sure that you're working in, you're not just constantly working out all the time. So um, I would recommend uh, getting a deep tissue massage once a week, doing um, PNF stretching, particularly partner stretching if you can uh, to get a deeper stretch. Uh, if you can't, then just use some thick resistance bands to be able to uh, get that deeper stretch, particularly important for stretching your hip flexors and your quads. Tip number four, um, days where your joints are sore, so that bad pain um, that I've talked about in the past. So we're not talking about muscle soreness. Um, we're not talking about um, just feeling body fatigue or feeling low motivation. We're talking about actually sore, like a sore knee, uh, a sore foot, um, maybe early onset of uh, shin splints, um, whatever it might be. And maybe it's an old injury um, that you've had in the past. We want to um, make sure we nip that in the butt straight away and don't just push through that, um, particularly if it's an overload type um, injury. We want to make sure we want to prevent at all costs, obviously, a stress fracture in the feet uh, or shin splints because they can be diabolical to your um, running fitness and obviously pre-season. So um, when you do get those early signs, the body does tend to let us know before it's a um, significant injury. I would go straight into your backup options of having some good aerobic swim workouts uh, or bike workout. Tip number five, uh, probably something that most of you would be doing already, but for some of you that don't, make sure you actually practice the test that your club does. So if you hear that they do it, they're changing to a 10 minute run and you've never gone for a 10 minute run before, I would be regularly doing um, that perhaps maybe a month out from your actual test with your football club. So practice your pacing, practice from a mental point of view, preparing for that and, and doing all out max effort. Um, and yeah, make sure you're familiar with the test before doing it with your football club. That's something that can be really important because as we know, um, yes, it is a test of your aerobic capacity, um, but it's also a test of your ability to um, get the most out of yourself, not over um, compete, get too competitive early and um, hit a wall, <clears throat> but equally we also don't wanna overpace and have too much left at the end where you, you could have uh, worked a lot harder. So that where, that's where the pacing comes in. Number six, mimic your training environment. 
Um, so we want to think about where, where you're going to be running that test with football club. Is it going to be a track? Is it going to be on a football oval? And if so, train at least once a week in that environment. So if you know it's going to be on a, on a track and field, then train um, your aerobic um, or long, longer interval day on that day, um, particularly when max distance efforts pops up, like maybe a th- three-minute max distance effort and you've got a target you want to hit, um, do it on that exact train. Ideally, try and get some players down so you can mimic competing with each other and running with people around you. Um, think about your running shoes, um, your attire, how you hydrate, how you eat leading up to that. Tip number seven, have a target and use the running calculator um, which is a link I'll add into the show notes of this podcast. It's fantastic. You've got all your, I'm just looking at it now for those on YouTube. You've got your, um, all, everywhere from between 5, 10K, half marathon, marathon, 800 meters, 1500, all the way through to 2K time trial. Um, you can enter in the distance. Then you can enter in the time that you want to hit, minutes and seconds, and then it will give you your split times that you need to hit. So if you're running at a 400 meter track, uh, and let's say I'll just enter in someone that wants to hit a six minute 35 for a 400 meters. They want to be averaging a one minute 19 uh, lap time. So that can be really, really important in terms of helping you pace.